Welcome to April Sleeco Challenge. Today's problem is brick wall. There is a brick wall in front of you. The wall is rectangular and has several rows of bricks. The bricks have the same height but different widths. You want to draw a vertical line from the top to the bottom and cross the least bricks. Now the list of the brick wall is represented by a list of rows and each row is a list of integers representing the width of each brick in this row from left to right. Now notice that the sum of the widths are all going to be the same because it's a rectangle. Now if your line goes through the edge of a brick, then the brick is not considered as cross. So you can see if we have a line that goes through the edge, that doesn't count. It's only the, when the line goes in between a brick or through a brick that that counts as a brick crossed. So one thing is you cannot draw a line just along the vertical edges of the wall because that's obviously going to be zero. So, uh, you know, initially this problem is pretty intimidating and I felt rather foolish because my first attempt was to think about uh, crot doing a nested for loop and checking every single line in between the ranges um, for, the, for the width of the column. So let's check like here, and then check here, and check here, and, and go, just go down the line and each time like subtract, see if the edge equals one, and if it does, we can pop it off and just count up how many bricks we can do that. But you know, at that approach, this isn't going to work because it's very inefficient. Now, one way to reframe this problem is rather than thinking about how can we minimize the number of bricks that we cross, rather, how can we maximize the number of edges that we cross, or, or these little parts here? And how do we know that? Well, essentially, let's say that we had this brick wall. One of the ways we can think about this is it's really all these index numbers in between here that really count. So since we don't know how far we've crossed so far, like let's accumulate these values instead and see what, what this brings us. So we can say 1, and then 3, and then 5, 6, and 3, 4, 6, 1, 4, 6. Um, and just here, basically what we're trying to check is these index numbers, when it's 3, and this is 3 as well, that essentially means that we're not crossing, that that's an edge. And we can see that's true, like here at 3, 1, 2, 3, this is an edge, right? What we can do then is just accumulate all these numbers and just go through each row and count up the number of indexes in between from here to here uh, and see which one is the maximum number because we want to find the maximum number of edges that we can get. And then all we need to do is <clears throat> subtract the number of rows from the maximum number of edges that we can find. Now hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's start off by initializing some variables, we'll say m, or actually n, equals the length of wall. And first thing we're going to do is create like a, a counter object. Now let's create a default predict here. Now for row in wall, we want to accumulate all these widths, right? And then we're going to add that to our counter object. So um, you could certainly you know, do that in the wall itself. But what I'm going to do is just create a previous value and say for brick in row, we are going to add to our previous the value of the brick, and then add this previous to the counter, increase that by one. And we'll do that for every single brick in every single row. Now all we need to do then is return the n, which is the number of rows subtracted by the max of c dot values. But there are a few edge cases here that's not going to work. Uh, one of the things we realize is like since we're accumulating we're going to have six in each one of these so that's going to think like well we just go all the way to the end so we can't do that we have to skip that last break. Uh, so to do that I'm just going to create say negative one and one more thing we have to note is <clears throat> if we had something like 1, 1, 
1, like this is going to think, um, oh, 3 is the maximum we can cross here, but that's not true. It's actually going to be 1, right? So uh, basically, if we have nothing in our counter object, oh, I'm sorry, it's not going to be 1, it's going to be 3. So we have nothing in our counter object. It's actually just going to be n. So that's just kind of an edge case we have to think about. If not counter object, then return n. Now let's see if this works. Looks like that's working, so let's submit it. And there we go, so accept it. Time complexity wise, this is going to be, <clears throat> well, the number of bricks, so it's n times m. And we do have to use n, I guess, n times m space as well for this counter object. Now I realize I didn't explain this very well, um, but hopefully this makes sense. I would recommend kind of playing around with it. Uh, yeah, my first approach was definitely a lot more complicated than this, but you know this is a lot simpler. It makes a lot more sense. So I think you know the big takeaway here is to always try to reframe the problem to simplify it. Okay, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.